You hear all the bull about diet and exercise. Carbs are evil. Do more cardio. Never eat bread or cookies again. Just do a juice cleanse. We get it. We fell for all of the BS too. It's time to go right to the source with the truth about how to live a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. I am Liz. And I'm Becca. We are your nutrition educators, and this is The Food Code. Hello, and welcome back to The Food Code. Happy Monday. Um, very, very excited today. We have a uh, friend of ours from Nutrition Coaching Institute. That's how we met. Uh, I know Andrew um, through there and very excited to interview him today and talk all things metabolic adaptation, female metabolism. Um, and we're going to dive into um, some insulin resistance things as well. So if you've been listening to the food code the past couple of weeks, you've heard us talk a lot about blood sugar um, and how that can impact insulin resistance and lead to insulin resistance when we are dealing with dysregulated blood sugar. Um, And so really excited to dive in today. Um, Andrew, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Give our listeners a little bit of background about you and what you do. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Liz and Becca, thanks for having me. I'm excited to kind of chat about this this topic that that affects a lot of people that we know and a lot of people that don't know it affects them. Um, Yeah, so uh, my name is Andrew Lawrence. I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, the great state of Tennessee, ever growing in population here. Um, I have my own sort of health journey is I I got a parasite uh, several years ago and didn't know it. I just like lost 30 pounds, constant vomiting for a really long time. I won't give any more details than that. Uh, Really, uh, uh, un unpleasant experience. So I was eating so frequently. I was literally just having to stuff myself all the time. Um, And it became just important for me to eat well, to feel even just kind of remotely well. So it was a a several year battle um, and just got into being my own kind of nutrition coach for a little bit. Um, So I got into health um, and then all through college actually worked like a a, a ministry job as a, um, as a, a, cook or you know not a chef I wouldn't say chef but a a cook at an after-school program for about 100 125 kids kind of in a in a a project and just got really excited about you know these kids were all you know pre-diabetic like you know fatty liver in in fifth grade Um, so kind of a a tough a tough neighborhood to be a kid in so trying to do what I could to serve them really healthy meals partnered with farmers in the Knoxville area we're a real good kind of farm town um, and so just served them the, the best possible meals we could um, to the extent that I knew what a, what a healthy meal was. Um, the, uh, the, the ministry where I worked at, there, the, there's a physician that actually just kind of uh, partnered with us there. And, and he told me that, that, uh, that, you know, they were dead set in his family practice, which is actually the, the largest independent family practice in Knoxville, um, was helping patients reverse, um, reverse type 2 diabetes. And I'm seeing this in kids, you know, this is the first, we're, we're really in the first generation of children who are growing up with, with diabetes. We have no idea how catastrophic this is going to be. We just have to guess. Um, and I just get, you know, I'm, I'm bit by the, the bug of, of, of wanting to kind of be in to, to the solution for this problem. Um, so anyway, so I work with a physician and we've, um, we exist as a, uh, you know, uh, we, we've been under the wing of this family practice. We've opened a gym, we run programs, um, and now we do a lot of kind of virtual health coaching, particularly with people that are metabolically diseased. So high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol, you know, whatever that means, whatever your doctor told you uh, about cholesterol. Usually people just know it's high cholesterol. Um, obesity, diabetes, prediabetes. Um, and so we've got you know, kind of a number of programs to help people with that, but then also just general uh, weight loss, people that, that you, you know, you work with, with 100 people that are pre-diabetic and they're going to have 100 other issues. So whether it's something like Hashimoto's and autoimmune or, um, I mean, gosh, you, you know, even things just like reflux, you know, everybody's got something. Yeah. Um, so, you know, kind of th- we, we work very much with the general population. Um, and then now more recently, we're seeing this, this pre-diabetes um, lead into cognitive decline. Um, and so we're now kind of working with uh, mild cognitive impairment, um, specifically with, we select really hard for those patients who are experiencing subjective mild cognitive decline, who have performed poorly on a cognitive assessment, and who have 
metabolic risk factors um, and then some genetic risk factors. Um, so we feel like with, with some of those people, um, literally their, their cognitive decline is an early stage dementia that can be a, a uh, that, that very often is set off by insulin resistance. If you can reverse the insulin resistance and get a lot of those things in order, um, you know, there's been some good success to, to reversing that cognitive decline. Um, so anyway, so there's, there's a lot of different branches that we work with off of kind of the core problem of just this, this metabolic dysfunction. Um, but I guess that's, you know, that's a 50,000 foot view. That's amazing. I mean, like, I just like listening to you, what I'm thinking is you see the long-term things that people don't see when things start happening. Like mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. see how this, you know, unable to lose weight and not doing anything and making changes turns into 20, 30 years from now, becoming a huge disease and issue yeah. and kind of declining your life to an extent. Yeah. And here's the crazy thing. For a lot of people, it can be 15 years away. I put out a, uh, like we, we put out just like a, an application process for mild cognitive decline. And I expected to get 70 year olds. Or, you know, we, we got a lot of like 40 year olds sending messages. I'm like, oh, you know, maybe their parents. They're like, no, I didn't want to tell anyone, but I'm having trouble remembering someone's name like every day. Um, and this is something that, again, this is like, we just, we can't forget how new this is. Like we didn't have this problem in the 80s and then like it was starting kind of in the, in the 90s. So we didn't have 45 year olds who had been insulin resistant for 20 years. Um, now we do and we're just now coming to grips with that. Yeah, I would love for you to expand a little bit more. I mean, what with, with what Becca and I see with some of our clients, we always talk about like weight is, you know, not the main issue. There's other underlying factors here that are root cause issues. And weight is a, a byproduct of being healthy or weight loss, I should say, is a byproduct of being healthy. We can have individuals coming to us who are eating, you know, relatively well in terms of like an overall calorie um, intake versus, you know, their output and their training and so on and so forth. But because of the years, if not decades for some of these women of chronic dieting and trying to cut calories or do more training and, you know, just driving their body into the ground. Now we're seeing a whole host of other symptoms, whether that shows up with fatty liver, poor detox abilities, their thyroid issues, you know, Hashimoto's, hypothyroid, things like that, or just other symptoms um, could be, you know, fatigue, not sleeping through the night, um, lack of drive for life and just, you know, kind of their mood is tanked and they don't feel like they want to do anything throughout the day. And just a whole mm -hmm. host of other, what we call signs and symptoms or those check engine lights that something else is going on internally. So for the population that you work with, a lot of these people who are already known to have insulin resistance, what are some of those symptoms that typically present just outside of, you know, being overweight or being obese? Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I actually like that you said, like the, just kind of the lack of, of drive for life and just kind of, they don't feel like doing anything. Honestly, that's the one that I'm really kind of landing on more is, um, it is, you know, our mission is to help people get to a, a place of peace and people are not able to be at peace if they're, people find it very difficult to be at peace if their body isn't in a, a good state. So we use really nutrition coaching, health coaching as a way to kind of just help support a, a better life in general. Like I care about your blood work, but, but what's behind the blood work is obviously much more important. Um, so, I mean, you know, it, just like you said, it's, it's chronic fatigue. It's a little bit of kind of vague um, depression. It's um, a lot of things that people don't think about, just like uh, gastric reflux, um, uh, IBS, which, you know, I'm sure y'all love that term. You know, it doesn't really mean anything, but it also means everything. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> yeah so just those like weird things that um, I'm just amazed at every time we work with people, you know, we try to take a lot of biofeedback and try to have them really just write down like, hey, what's everything you're struggling with? You'd be amazed at what, you know, this thing over here that you never would have thought begins to, to get better. Like, you know, I'm not going to the bathroom normally. And then 600 calories up later, they're like, hey, you know, I feel great. And I'm going to the bathroom normally. And it's like, hey, you know, I don't know, looking at your blood work with, you know, you got insulin, your lipid panel, all that kind of stuff that's going to tell me such a small amount, but, but that our clients tell us so much more about what's going on that, you know, we, we just have this 
we thought we had a big lens. It turns out we've got a really small lens and our clients are telling us what the, what the thing is. So I, I don't know if that totally answers it, but just kind of the general like blah is, is I think the problem that we want to solve. And one of the ways we want to solve that is by helping people get healthy. So. Yeah. So can you give us, I know we talked a little bit offline about this, um, you know, what you're currently doing and how you kind of stumbled upon reverse dieting and, you know, getting clients to start eating a little bit more to help them continue to see progress and where that all started from. So like when you started working with clients, what you were doing to help them improve, you know, the standard blood work um, that a lot of people get worried about and doctors want to right. see improved before going on medication. Right. So, yeah, so I'm at, uh, uh, I don't know if I said the, the name earlier, but we're Vital Signs Wellness um, and we are run by, you know, our, our CEO is a, a physician. So I'm, I'm not a physician, not, not a medical person. I, I don't have the, the guts for it. Um, but I have, have the privilege of, of coming to this problem from a, uh, a, a medical perspective, meaning, you know, we, we work, I work with a physician on, on specific patients. So I'm coming to it from the kind of um, medical kind of like milieu. Like we think about the problem as the, as, as I would say the best in healthcare are thinking about it right now. Um, whereas you guys have your background probably more in, in kind of fitness and nutrition. Um, and, and I think one thing that I've seen is that both sides just have so much to contribute. Uh, so coming from the, the kind of medical side, um, there's a really good reliable protocol at getting people's insulin, fasting blood glucose, uh, the, the fatty liver cleaned out, all that kind of stuff. The, the, the simple version is, you know, this is not all of it, obviously, but the simple version is if you, if you can control carbs pretty quickly, that, that's probably the fastest way to get those numbers better. I think there's other ways. I think that's, that's kind of the fastest way. Uh, so our conviction at first was, hey, well, let's get some fat off. Let's get the blood work looking really, really well. And then we're going to implement things that, that most of the healthcare world doesn't have the opportunity to, which is, you know, we did group-based exercise and, and classes and education, um, but everybody gets a lab lab panel that it goes through the system um kind of help help control glucose help get some strength training in um, and then the blood work looks great um so then we've got a whole sort of uh a pool of people who their blood work looks good they feel a lot better they're off a ton of their medications so metformin is gone two months ago that was easy uh blood pressure sometimes takes a little bit more but but that blood pressure is gone too that's pretty easy too um, people that are dosing insulin, they've uh, completely halved it or completely gotten off of it. So everything's great, right? The, you know, the sun's shining, no one's on their meds anymore or some of those big ones. But then kind of what's next? You know, they've still got 25, 30, 40, 80 pounds they still want to lose. Um, well, so we are, the first part of our protocol was to cut carbs. Well, if we've got 60 pounds to go, we can't cut carbs anymore. Um, you know, so, so how do we get them there? So we've got a, 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 um, a pool of people who've made a lot of progress in their uh, longevity stats and their healthcare costs and the time they're spending with their provider, tons of progress there. Um, but body composition matters. Body composition matters because it matters. It, it, it determines how people feel. Um, it matters because probably insulin resistance is a lot more likely to come back if you haven't fixed your body composition. So what's the solution? Well, first let's get intake on these people like okay what are you eating what can we do next and so basically looking for that solution we, we tried to look at people who can reliably change body composition and that's kind of how we stumbled upon you know a lot of people in kind of the fitness world have had a lot of success um, taking healthy non-insulin resistant people and, and radically changing their body composition um, so you know like you guys have probably been practicing for a long time you know you've got to rebuild metabolism you've got to rebuild intake um, in order to set people up for, for success to, to lose weight again. So, so getting that fat off, you know, it, if you've got 25 pounds off, that's great. And that's enough to change you internally. But now that we've changed you internally, let's make it stick. And so that's where we've kind of stumbled upon like, hey, if you want to get another 25 pounds off, you've got to, you've got to manage intake and you've got to start tracking your food basically and, and probably rebuilding. So, um, so yeah, so you know, how do we solve the next problem once your blood work looks good? And that kind of gets us to like, hey, great, you've got all, you've got all things available to you now. You know, you don't have to kind of restrictive diet as much anymore. You know, you can, you can be more flexible in your, in your protocols. So I think that's really good news to people. I think they're really excited to, to get to that point. Yeah. 
I'm sure. And I think for some individuals, like, especially if let's say you have someone who needs to lose hundred pounds, right? They go through this kind of low carb phase. They're resensitizing the body to insulin and kind of getting rid of some of these other underlying issues. But now comes the frustration of, okay, I've been at this for six months. And while, yes, I do feel better. And yes, I have lost some weight and my blood work is showing, you know, better. Now, right. what do I do? Because I've already been at this for six months restricting. And so I know we talked kind of offline that you kind of stumbled upon, you know, periodization. And this is something that Becca and I um, have been doing for a few years, especially for mm -hmm. females. And, you know, we have a lot of women who come to us who, again, have been, you know, chronically dieting for years and there's no other place to go. Like if that's one thing that I could say, you know, to a woman who's already eating 1200 calories, like there's just no other place to go. You can't go to a thousand. You can't go to 800 and feel better, right? We've got mm -hmm. to rebuild. Or lose the weight. Yeah. Or lose the weight. Right? <laughs> it's, yeah. You're probably going to be storing more fat as you continue to try to overtrain and eat less because you're just, you know, putting things uh, in the storage tank since you're running on empty all the time. So for some people, we do see them gaining weight, eating very little um, or some individuals who are eating very little through the week and then swinging the pendulum up on the weekends, of course, um, body's trying to recompensate there. So a lot of what we do with our ladies is yes, we reverse diet several of them if necessary. Um, and then we go into that periodization process. So I'd love to hear from you as you are helping these people, you know, lose weight, improve their lab markers and get off some of these medicines. I mean, you mentioned the low carb, right? And, and what we see for some women is yes, moderate to low carb works well. Um, for mm -hmm. other individuals, maybe they do need to go into a ketogenic state for a short period of time. So I'd love for you to kind of touch on that because Becca and I are pretty um, outspoken in the world of we don't agree with keto as a dietary approach. However, mm -hmm. when it comes to the population you serve, or when we do have clients who we're seeing, you know, high levels of fasting glucose and A1C, you know, pretty darn high, right? They're borderline if not already type two, yes, we know that getting them into this low carb or even to a ketogenic state six to eight weeks could be the answer to reverse these things quickly. But for you, what have you found to be the most successful? When you mentioned, you know, kind of going lower carb, are you referring to getting them into ketosis or are you referring them to maybe a hundred to a hundred and, you know, 20 grams of carbs, maybe 80 grams of carbs? What's that like? Yeah, great question. So first of all, I think, you know, we've tested ketones on a, on a lot of our clients. I think for, and if you're really talking about a true ketogenic diet, even with really good coaching, few people are really going to register like significant ketosis. Um, so let me put that there. Okay. If you have uh, a state of dementia that is significantly or, or potentially linked to your insulin resistance, there are, and there are other things like, uh, like epilepsy, but there are times where therapeutic nutritional ketosis is the standard of care. Um, okay. So that's one, you know, just, just putting that out there. That's, that's not the majority of our clients. Then you've got kind of low carb or ketogenic. Uh, so let's take a, uh, an, an example. If you're pre-diabetic, you're, you're on a, a statin and your, your fasting insulin's a little bit elevated and your glucose is creeping up. Uh, I think a moderate carb approach, and then if you get your sleep in order and start strength training, if you if you're consistent with that, you're pretty much going to manage your 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 pre diabetes, um, and then hopefully you've established a metabolism that can that can handle carbs. So let's take the example of I'll give an example of like uh, I've got sort of three three diabetics at the same time that all kind of joined that were very low calorie. And I've also got, got diabetes. Uh, these, these patients would kind of demonstrate a little bit of like kind of skinny fat. So not a ton of fat to lose, but also not a ton of muscle. So they're eating 1200 calories, long-term diabetics. They've been diabetic for five years or more. So we've got to find a way to take a anemic metabolism with very, very little muscle mass, control their sugar, and prepare them for fat loss your head just starts to spin. It's like, oh, how do we do it? So again, none of these people are ever going to register that they're in therapeutic ketosis, but we've got to find a way to get their calories up maybe 800, 900, 1,000. With those people, I'm going to make sure their protein's adequate and I'm pretty much going to build them up with fat. Um, luckily enough, we've been able to get their, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, literally I'm thinking about these people, we got their blood work last week before ever putting them in a, in a diet phase, before intentionally pursuing fat loss, they've lost a little bit of weight over the course of like a, a high fat, you know, reverse diet, basically. They've got their best day one C's that they've ever had um, and, and, pay, and gotten off metformin. So increased calories by about 900, uh, best day one C, best uh, 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 getting off meds, feeling good, and then that, now they're ready for fat loss. So I don't know exactly. And, and then, by the way, we have all of our, if, if you register, you know, if you, if you work with us or you're in our network and, and you say, yes, I'm type 2 diabetic, we just automatically have their physician prescribe a CGM. Uh, we just, we've got to have your data, a continuous glucose monitor. Yeah. So, so we've got to be able to track them. You know, I'm not going to wait a month to see their blood work. We've we got to be able to see them day to day. So the cool thing is to be able to see their intake is significantly increasing while their sugar is getting, is drastically improving at the same time. Um, I just don't know. I, I haven't had guts to throw 100, 200 carbs on, on someone like that. My guess is it doesn't do well just because sometimes they'll, they'll cheat a little bit. Um, okay. But so, so again, I, I don't know if, uh, if, if the, the, the term ketogenic, because really ketogenic should refer to, you know, it shouldn't just mean vaguely low carb. You know, if you mean a therapeutic ketogenic intervention, that's over there. Um, but these people do need to be significantly rebuilt, but they literally can't, they're having a hard time tolerating carbs and they also don't have a very good engine on them. Um, so we've got to find a way to rebuild them and, and we primarily do it with that. So does that kind of answer? That's the way that I've done it. And that's, that's the only way I can think to do it. And luckily enough, they, they can comply with it and, and, and are, are excited to see their results. Um, but you know, I'd be interested to test it uh, another way. I'd love to see what that would look like. Yeah. That, I mean, like, so all the millions of people that say they do keto don't actually do keto. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably true. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, I totally understand. And I think, like you said, that is probably the only method that is going to work for the majority of people, because most of these people are coming as insulin resistant individuals and right. we cannot rebuild a metabolism when their body is not going to function off of carbohydrates. Right. Um, and so, you know, it's, but the, the main concept here too, that I think a lot of people need to hear is like, you are giving them more calories. You are giving mm -hmm. them you know, they are fat calories and they are high quality fat calories, but they need to be eating more to be able to increase this metabolism to mm -hmm. then be able to lose weight again. Um, yeah. And sure, I'm sure you guys see it too. Like we see a lot of people when we reverse diet, do, do lose some weight because their body mm -hmm. is functioning again. And it's able, you know, weight loss is a, it's a calorie need um, thing that the body does. It's, it's a, you know, not done at zero energy. The body requires a lot of energy to burn fat. So um, right. I think that that's, that's great that you brought that up and that's, you know, makes sense how we go about it. But at the end of the day, people need to eat more. Um, but yeah, and, 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 I, and I think it's helpful to think about um, calories in, calories out and weight loss over here. And then whatever crazy dysfunction is happening with diabetes as a separate thing. Right. I think there's plenty of literature that people lose weight and their diabetes doesn't get any better. And I think we're showing a lot of people's diabetes getting tremendously better before we even get into weight loss. So I, and that's the conversation we have with our people, like, look, everybody wants to lose weight. If, if, if your metabolism is in that bad of shape, focus on that first, like try it, do, do what you can to master that. And then you'll have a much better fat loss result. It, they don't have to compete. Those aren't necessarily competing, but, and sometimes there's overlap, but they, all, they are generally two separate problems. I feel like. I so, you said that because we have so many people that yes, my goal is just weight loss. And, you know, mm -hmm. saying to them, wait a second, we've got all these under, under underlying root cause issues. We've got to tackle these first because your body has to be in a healthy place in order for you to be able to lose weight. But also let's think about the sustainability plan, right? Like if we just cut somebody's calories and they lost weight, well, that's great. If we don't take care of those root cause issues, they're going to come back in five years, probably worse off than they were today, because at some point in time, that dysfunction is going to roar its head and they're not going to be able to sustain, you know, the weight loss that they've lost. And so we always tell people coming into our program, understand that we are coaching you on health first, 
we understand at the same time that your goal is to lose fat. Your goal is to lose Mm -hmm. weight, to, you know, get to that place with your body composition that you're happy, but we're not going to do anything out of, you know, our value system to get you that result because we want to coach on health first. So I love that you brought that up and that you also aligned with that telling people, you know, we've got to get the ship righted before we focus on body composition. Cause at the end of right. the day, from a longevity perspective, health is more important, right? To, mm-hmm. to anybody like, to be able to get to that fat loss place. So yeah, yeah. I want to kind of dive into the next thing that we had um, marked on our notes here. And I think this is going to be a good um, topic of conversation because we were talking offline just around like what doctors miss with disease reversal by not mm-hmm counting, we, we were talking about counting macros, but let's just say managing overall intake and maybe the balance of that intake. And so one of the biggest things that Beck and I focus on is nourishment, like whether or not someone is, you know, hitting their protein, their carbs, their fat goals, their overall calorie goals. Um, we're looking at, are we getting it from one ingredient, whole foods, we're, you know, minimizing sugar, we're maximizing fiber, we're supporting the detoxification process. We are improving digestion. That's a huge thing for us is we always want to know, um, you know, what is the state of the gut? Are we actually absorbing the nutrients from our foods and being nourished? Because as we know, we are very undernourished, um, you know, as a population. And so I'd love for you to kind of speak on that a little bit and what you all have learned in the last six months, you know, or year as you have helped some of these people with the reversal of this disease. But now we dive into like the periodization and like, how has that kind of changed things for you all and finding that balance with your patients of intake levels appropriate, you know, macros with a heavy focus and understanding mm-hmm. that micros are also very important. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a pendulum that's always swinging. It's um, it's also just that there's a difference between getting it all right and knowing it in your head. There's a difference between delivering that information to a Panera client and then there's a difference in the client following through so all of those are very different things so to be very clear micros are important macros are important um and and then it's a question of what do we focus on and in what order do we focus on it in um i think in general the the the, the healthcare world the the the, the medical world um even the, the, the traditional healthcare world, but then also functional medicine doctors like, you know, Terry Walls, Gundry, Pratia, uh, you know, just like the, the great names of that world, um, probably have focused more on the, the, the micros, I, I think. Um, and, and, and really, nutritional periodization hasn't really been picked up by the, 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 the healthcare world yet. I'm, I'm sure it will be soon. Um, but, but I do think the healthcare world because they see so much of the lab work and they're getting so much of the results and because they're not seeing what their patients are eating from a macro standpoint, uh, there, there has been a bit of a heavy micro focus. So, you know, get your greens in, get, um, you know, supplements that, that, that support a good micro, uh, biome, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, so you definitely need both. Um, and it's hard to really nail both because there's just so much you can only focus on at once. Um, so I think there should be, I'm a, just a big believer in seasons. I think you've got a, a, a focus in this season. And that's where nutritional and exercise periodization really fit into this. Like, hey, you're not going to be able to focus on everything at once. What's your biggest need? So it's individualized and then you have seasons. You know, if someone's dieting and they are uh, eating, eating 1,200 calories, that's a great time to focus on your micronutrients. Um, if you are eating 2,000 calories, and you're kind of more out of maintenance you're probably, even if the food quality isn't perfect, you're probably going to get enough nutrients in that as long as you've got some, some basic, some basic habits in. Um, so, so I guess that I, it's, it's hard to answer, you know, if I had that perfectly answered, you know, I'd probably be a much better coach, but we do do a lot of things to just kind of contribute like, like micronutrients that people aren't getting. So a couple of things we do is uh, we have a lot of people on, on bone broth. Um, just kind of getting, getting that regular. There's a lot of good hacks. You know, I, I tell everybody to get, you know, just no question greens every day, get your bone broth in, um, you know, uh, uh, and, and then you just kind of have to see where, where people are. A lot of times the people that aren't getting micronutrients will kind of reveal themselves. Um, 
And then, then it's a question of, you know, how do you just, in a, in a one-on-one, like, like that's a question that I try to find with each client um, is, is what does, what does Liz need? What does Becca need? And if Liz is eating, you know, 1700 calories and exercise in three days and Becca's eating 1100 calories and she hasn't exercised in a week or a month, yeah, we'll just, we'll approach that differently. So I don't know that I find a perfect balance with that. Where have y'all been landing? Like what, where do y'all, where do y'all start? we typically start with tracking food just so that the person can be aware of like how much they're eating and what that looks like in that type of right. food. Right. Um, and that allows us like Liz and I are really big on taking one to two weeks to just like evaluate clients without making any changes. Um, yeah. Because as soon as we, you know, start giving them stuff to do, people get really into it or they get overwhelmed or they get, and so we need to see where they're starting um, and see what the biggest areas of focus are. So like, is this person only eating fast food or is this person under eating, but eating okay? Like, um, mm-hmm. so we look at a couple different areas to kind of decide on that. Um, we've slowly moved a little bit more away from purely macros um, mm-hmm. into more of quality of food focus only because sure. I think a lot of our clients are autoimmunity, thyroid issues, gut issues, things that quality of food makes quite a big difference. Um, and, and interestingly, on, on the gut thing, with, with a, so that's what I've been surprised by. If, I, if you had to put me on, you know, what camp am I in? What affects the way you feel more? Uh, your micronutrient composition or your macro composition and how much you're eating? I would probably say macro if I, if I had to pick a camp. And I've been surprised at, um, like we, we, we've talked about Terry Walls right before we, we started this. If, if someone comes to you with a gut issue, is your first question um, elimination diet? Let's pull things out and then make sure you're getting enough micronutrients. Or is it, hey, maybe you just like need more fuel. Maybe you need to fuel your body better. Mm-hmm. I might actually think I've come from the elimination diet side. I think I might be swinging a little bit more towards, hey, let's get a minimum baseline going. And obviously, while we're doing that, get your intake to look better, um, look more like something your, your grandmother would smile on. Um, but I think the, you, you know, and we'll always be changing, you know, we'll be, we'll, both of our organizations will be in a different place in a month, um, which is great, you know, hopefully we're improving. Uh, but I think I might lean towards the how much is a, is a real... I think they're called macronutrients for a reason. I, I think they, they, we need them in large quantities and, you know, and that's not to, obviously I'm, I'm trying to get my green smoothie in every day too. So <laughs> I think it's very dependent upon the symptoms the person's presenting. So we, right. I will definitely say, I agree with you in terms of, I used to be much more on the camp of, you know, total elimination and, you know, mm-hmm. being at right out of the gates for pretty much everybody can be beneficial and sure it can be. No one can argue that removing dairy and gluten and sugar and processed foods, you know, for a period of time is going to make someone feel better. But now because of, you know, all of the different symptoms that we see with people, some are more severe, right? And so then maybe they do need to go down the route of we're removing things for a period of time, but then we do run into the battle of we need the micronutrients still. We don't want to have, you know, minimal diversity. We want maximal diversity in terms of foods that they can consume um, for gut diversity and bacteria. Mm -hmm. For people who though, you know, don't have that many symptoms, what I like to do personally is I like to say, okay, as I'm doing this data collection, what I want to see from you is when are you experiencing this bloating, this acid reflux, the gas, the constipation, then I can kind of start to correlate because I've done this, you know, for long enough to know how many trigger foods there are um, to correlate. Maybe it is either the beans for you, or maybe it is the dairy, right? Again, depending upon what their symptoms are pretty, in my mind, pretty easy to spot a dairy intolerance, right? Like we're Mm -hmm. either going to have phlegm in the throat, we're going to have um, pimples on the arms or the chin, um, you know, nasally, we're going to be constipated, little things like that. Um, I had one recently, um, uh, carbs don't agree with me. I said, okay, like which carbs? Well, bread and pasta. I was like, uh, I think it might be gluten. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the gluten. Probably the gluten. Yeah, so I, yeah. I agree with you. I think, you know, when the more and more that Beck and I have learned and really, you know, dove into gut health because I've gone through a couple of gut healing protocols and they're not fun. I had a parasite. It doesn't sound like it was as bad as yours. Um, But, you know, I want my clients to have 
a wide variety of food. I think from the mental and emotional place, it allows them to have more fun with their food. There's more enjoyment, right? But again, balancing the, the macros with the micros, we have a wider diversity there. So right. um, as we kind of you know start to wrap up and it sounds like we've kind of paired these two things together, everybody understands the importance of their greens, their vegetables, you know, the one ingredient foods. I'd love to kind of talk about the top three focuses and habits that you've worked on with clients for this disease reversal. And I'm excited because we just last week talked a lot about the importance of blood sugar control. So I'm excited mm-hmm. for you to kind of bring it home and reiterate that message that we sent. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just say like, some of these are things that they need to do. And some of them are just kind of philosophically, what are we need for? So the first thing that we're doing for most of our people is to control their blood sugar. So, so definitely, you know, that's, that's the goal for so many people. Um, if you're diabetic, you know, we're going to build muscle on you. We're going to, you know, but let's control your blood sugar. That's the immediate. And by the way, just because blood sugar looks better, doesn't necessarily mean that the diabetes is getting better. Like I'm, I'm a firm believer that you haven't reversed your diabetes if your A1C is down, you've reversed your diabetes when your A1C is down and you're eating a moderate amount of carbs and you're fine. So, but the first step is let's get the blood sugar under control because literally that amount of blood sugar is cramming the, the capillaries in, your, in their eyes. I mean, their, their vision, they're having to regularly change their prescription. We've got neuropathy going into the feet. So, so their, their, their extremities are on kind of a, a, a ticking time bomb sort of. So we've got to get the blood sugar under control. Um, so we have everybody go uh, directly on a, like I said earlier, directly on a CGM and we know whether or not what we're doing is, is, is working. Um, and by the way, blood sugar control is, you know, there's a couple of protocols that probably weren't those people, but some people it's just as simple as like, hey, you got to start sleeping better. Um, you know, why was my, you know, I'll get, I'll get a text at 7 a.m. Why, why is my blood sugar at, at, at 210 this morning? Like I've been, I've been eating less carbs. Like, why is my blood sugar still up? I'm like, okay, how, how much do you sleep last night? Uh, it's three hours and 20 minutes. Like, okay, take a nap. <laughs> um, so whatever people are doing, you know, that people will usually have one to two habits that are, that are throwing off their blood sugar. So first thing, let's get that under control. And from a efficacy standpoint, you know, sometimes you're working with a client and they can't lose weight immediately um, just because they've got to, they got to rebuild first. When you, when somebody gets their insulin within a week or two weeks, which is not a call I make actually, but you know, they, they talk with their physician and they, they need to get off of it. That does a, you know, that completely from a mindset standpoint, it, it, it is doing something really good for their body and it totally gets them psyched the next steps. So get the blood sugar moving in the right direction. Um, after that, we got to just make sure we're building a, a strong metabolism that's going to continue to kind of carry that forward. So not just blood sugar, but getting the, the free fatty acids out of the, the uh, blood to get the, the, um, the fat that's accumulating around the liver and the pancreas. Um, so we want to build metabolism and strength training is a huge part of that. I mean, we, our, our people have got to commit to strength training at least three days a week. Um, if you're not going to, if you come and, and you want to be healthy, and you want my opinion and you won't strength train, you know, it's just, it's not going to work. You know, that's, that's one of the core things that you're going to have to do to take see results. Like you want to be a painter, but you don't want pain. Okay. <laughs> um, so they got a strength train. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then honestly, the third thing is a little bit, but like, like we're really big just on, on data and explaining to people their data. The typical, um, that I'm sure everyone can relate to, the typical experience in, in healthcare as you go in, people tell me, I'll, I'll have a conversation with someone after they talk to their doctor, they say, yeah, he said that number was big or high or it was small or, and, and I'm like, what number was it? And they're like, well, it was the, well, and he put me on a statin for blood pressure. I'm like, you mean cholesterol? Like, yeah. Uh, so people just have, no idea what they just talked to the doctor about. That's that's got to change. They've got to understand their blood work. They've got to understand what their meds are. They've got to understand what criteria they need to hit to be able to make improvement on those. Um, and so we so data is yours. Data is to inform you. Data is to encourage you. Um, and we really care giving our patients their data, um, and then just kind of walking them through the you, you know just being just being source and being a support through this convoluted system. Of, of healthcare, um, giving them ownership of their data and their body um, and helping them track the things that matter. So sleep, food intake, blood sugar, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
uh, lean mass, fat mass, you know, our, our people have to know that it's not about weight loss, it's about fat loss. Um, so, you know, if I have to, if I have to say, you know, for most of our people control blood sugar, build metabolism through strength training, and then track and measure or, you, or else you can't manage it. That's so, so helpful and just hammers home everything that we talk about. But I think from a different perspective, good, from a good. medical perspective, you know, like you do, and I think that it's amazing what it sounds like you guys do. I have honestly never heard of like a, you know, a, a grouping of physician and health coaching in that nature. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't unfortunately heard of many. My mind um, is yeah. event too. We need to move to Knoxville, Becca. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we can yeah. Help. Um, please do, yeah. please do. That's amazing. And I think, you know, like, like you said, the accountability factor is huge for a lot of people. And I think that unfortunately people, a lot of times go to doctors and like you said, they feel like this is their only option um, of just like going on these medications and that's, that's that. And like, you're stuck here now. Um, When in reality, there's so many things that can reverse these things that can bring on better health. Um, But a lot of times you can't do it on your own. Like it's no fault of people. They just don't have the knowledge. And so find someone that has the knowledge that can help you understand that can help you do these things properly um, and implement them so that they stick. And like you said, I, Liz and I are huge strength training proponents. We are, uh, we push it on all of our clients. And, and unfortunately, like at that phase, like walking's not enough. Like, you know, you, you need to build muscle so that your muscles can help burn the energy that you're consuming all the time. Um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's amazing. This has been awesome. I feel like we might need a part two because um, there's a lot of stuff that we didn't get to that I want to still pick your brain about and, you know, help. Yeah, share. no, there, there's a, there's a ton. And, and I feel like we're, we're all just learning, but we have the pleasure of tracking our, our, our people very closely. And so we have a really unique opportunity to learn really quickly. Mm-hmm. And, and if something's not working for us, we'll be able to abandon it quick because we're, we're con- oh. I love the scientific method. Um, but the institution of science is just going to move really slowly. So if we can bring the scientific method to clients that we're seeing on a weekly or monthly basis and constantly adapting, I really am, am super excited that there's kind of a, an army of coaches that are tinkering and, and experimenting and n- never with anything that's totally, new. you know, there's always a good, a good basis for the things that we're, but, but we're refining to try to aim for, for best. Um, so I'm excited to hear about what you guys are learning with autoimmune and IBS and you know all that kind of stuff and and I think that I think that that you guys and and I will know a lot more in a year and I think in five years the community will know just a a ton more about some of these things so I'm 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 very excited for that so we'll have to we'll have to stay in touch yeah we definitely will we definitely will so as we wrap this up if you don't mind um let our listeners know like where they can connect with you, follow you, either social media, um, the practice that you all have there in Knoxville. Um, Cause I'm sure there's going to be some individuals that may want to reach out and touch base. Yeah, absolutely. So best thing now we're actually, um, I just uh, powered down our website and we're rebuilding it. So we'll have it in about, you know, it's never great to go on a podcast, but a website, but it should be up in about a week and a half. Best place to find me is a Travis Lawrence on Instagram, A T R A V I S. L-A-U-R-E-N-C-E. Uh, just, you know, message me there. Um, and then, you know, that, that's probably the best place. We just kind of open that up to be a, a personal page where I talk a little bit about coaching. Um, so that's great. And then, you know, yeah, if you give people three options, they don't go to any of them. So yeah, just find me on Instagram. <laughs> that's good. Perfect. We will do that. And we'll link that on the show notes. So thank Wonderful. you so much for your time. Loved our conversation and um, hope you that you have a great day and we will definitely be Happy to have you back on anytime. Thanks, Liz. Can I add one more thing? Yeah. Uh, just because this is a really sensitive thing for a lot of people, you know, we talked a little bit about cognitive decline. Uh, if if any of your listeners know someone with that, you know, obviously we can't ever possibly can help, but we just did a, a, a podcast that I'll send you guys just on the general rule for cognitive decline. We just want people to know that there are some reasons for 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 hope. Um, so that might be something for, for people that have a grandmother or other or family history of that. Um, that's just something that I really have a heart for now that I know a lot of people are struggling with. So I'll, I'll shoot that to you guys. That's another a good resource for people. Yeah, we'd love that. We'll throw that in the show notes um, and we'll post it up too when we uh, put this live. So wonderful. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you all so much.
Thank you all so much for being here. If you've enjoyed this podcast, the best thing that you could do for us as a gift to us would be to take a screenshot and share it on Instagram, tag us, share it on Facebook, whatever platform that you listen, or just tell a friend, invite a friend to listen to this podcast. Um, The more that you can kind of share with word of mouth, the more people that we can touch throughout the world. Five-star reading and review on iTunes as this helps us grow and reach others. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us a DM or an email and we will talk to you soon. Have a great day.